The levee, it is breaking, it's gonna flood the town. It's men against Mother Nature, and we're fighting on the ground. The rain, it is tapping upon my window frame, calling me out. All right, guys, so today what I'm going to do is a haircut. I wanted to switch it up and do a men's cut today. I know a lot of you guys like the men's cuts. So today what we're going to do is I'm going to walk you through this disconnected front uh, of a men's cut. The cool thing about the cut today is that we're going to work with disconnection, but it's going to be a weightless disconnection because of our elevation. So if that confuses you, you should definitely watch this entire video. So the inspiration from this cut came from a haircut that I used to wear in high school because I listened to a band called Blink-182 and the lead singer, Tom DeLong had this haircut with this disconnected front and I loved that haircut I wore it all the time but when I had it cut on my head it never really uh, was right so today this is my version of that haircut and um, I know a lot of you guys still listen to that band so a lot of you might be looking for this type of cut uh, it's kind of the bangs in the face it's more of a rock and roll cut you could flip the bang up if you wanted to and wear it kind of uh, back as well so there's a lot of versatility to this cut so you don't have to wear it just like this but a couple other things I love is that it has a little bit more length in the haircut but all of this disconnection is seamless because of the elevation so let's just get started so you understand it thank you guys so much for watching let me know in the comments what you think and here we go all right, so we're gonna start off our sectioning high on the parietal ridge. So I wanna take that section, especially when I'm working with men's hair, um, and this is definitely a higher density of hair, I wanna work higher on the parietal ridge because as I work up to the parietal ridge, I'm going to be leaving a little extra weight to help build in that shape. So uh, I'm gonna start off taking vertical sections uh, right in the temple area, straight out from the head, no over direction and just cutting a straight line down. What that's gonna do is play off of the curves of the head. So because I'm holding it straight out, you could see that the angle um, on the very top of my finger is at more of a 45 degree angle, so it's gonna give us more of a graduated feel. And then as I work my way down the section, it's more 90 degrees, so it's gonna give me a layered feel. So that's what's gonna collapse the sides down. I'm leaving a little extra length because um, in this haircut, I definitely, I don't, the sides don't need to be super short. There needs to be a little bit more movement in there. So just working along that whole panel, everything's coming straight out, no over direction again, and watch how I comb the hair. So I'm scooping the hair. What that's doing is helping me push that new hair towards the guideline so that I'm not moving my guideline from where it lives. If you think about what a guide is, is it's a place that you're bringing something to. So um, you definitely don't want to move it from where it is because then you're comp creating a completely different guide and your haircut's going to be completely different at the end. So just make sure that you're always combing the new hair towards the guideline. Now as we move into the back point, of the haircut, I'm gonna switch from going vertical sections to diagonal back sections. And I'm gonna work that all the way through um, from behind the ear to the nape of the neck. Um, using my blacksmith fit scissor from Mizutani, this is a six and a half inch scissor. I like to keep this one handy when I'm doing men's cutting, especially in the sides, because if I switch to scissor over comb or anything like that, I like having the longer blade. Longer blade doesn't really matter when you're working in your fingers. So you could choose pretty much any uh, length scissor that you're looking for, but I like the blacksmith fit um, as my kind of go-to tool for um, men's cutting. And not even that it's the blacksmith fit, mostly because it's the six and a half inch scissor. Um, so we're working through everything is, we're going diagonal back, like I said, and everything's coming straight out from the head at 90 degrees. So we're not creating any weight in this point of the haircut, we're following the head shape, creating those round layers in there. And you can see how small my sections are. And this is actually sped up, so I slowly take that parting. Um, and you can see, even with it sped up, it's pretty slow. Because I want to make sure that those partings are exactly the way that I want them every single time. So I really take my time when making those partings, because that's going to uh, make your haircut more consistent in the end. So just continuing through the back, working palm to palm, keeping everything at 90 degrees, and staying as consistent as possible using those small sections.
Now I'm going to go through, I'm going to use my prepare spray. This is our liquid tool glide that we use for razor cutting. I also love it as a cutting lotion. So um, I think a lot of times we go in and we'll just keep spraying water on the hair, which is fine. But when you're working with these type of sections, it's nice to have something with a little condition to it that helps hold the hair that you're not going to feel in the hair uh, in the end when you blow it dry. Also, I do want to say that uh, the head sheet that you see on the left-hand side, you can download that by clicking the link in the description below, um, which will take you to our Dropbox and allow you to download the head sheet um, so that you can use it at your station if you want. Some people are making books with them and all of that. So this will be about my last section, working all the way over to the opposite corner of the head. Um, and keeping that diagonal feel to the hair, still keeping it at 90 degrees, except for if you see right in the, uh, the bottom of my finger, that's going to be a little bit lower elevation. So we are building up a little extra weight in the crown area. So you can see I'm using the fine teeth of the comb. This is my 339 comb from YS Park. Um, I like this comb because it has a lot of tension. Uh, it's a smaller comb, so when I'm working in tighter spaces, I like that as well. And then the uh, wider teeth are not too wide. So I, I, I find it a very versatile comb for pretty much any situation. So if I was going to pick one comb, that would be what it was. And now I'm going to add a little bit of prepare to the right side before I start that. So um, start off, I'm going to take half inch sections again. Um, now I know there's going to be the question of how do I match up each side. So what I usually do is I'll make a cut and then uh, check and kind of stand in front of the head or look in the mirror and see if I've matched up the sides if they look right and then I'll move on. Don't try cutting the whole entire side and then checking. Just check that first section right away. So big difference here um, is really that I'm, I'm combing more on top of the hair and pushing instead of scooping underneath. Um, that's to, again, keep that new hair going towards the guideline and not pushing the guideline away. So just keep working through the back, um, vertical section, and building up that weight towards the parietal ridge, collapsing the shape underneath, and working those layers throughout the head. Once I get behind the ear, that's when I have my guide to move into the back. So that's gonna be a little bit different with each person that you're working on. Um, so just work your the hair until you get to that ear point, then you can connect um, your guideline from that and work into the nape of the neck, so working diagonal back. Um, the hardest part about working through the back is not building up too much weight because no matter what, automatically when we comb the hair down, we want to drop our fingers down as well, which is going to build up a lot more weight in the haircut. So just make sure that as you're working through, you keep your hair or your fingers directly out from that parting and you don't drop them down too much. In some cases you want to do that, but in men's cutting for the most part, you want to collapse that shape and create those layers. All right, so we're gonna speed up the back a little bit. Basically what you wanna do is just stay consistent through the back, working palm to palm, cutting everything at 90 degrees, and you'll be good to go through the back. Now as we work into the crown area, what I'm gonna be doing is taking a vertical section and pulling it straight out from the head. So there's our vertical section, and uh, no over direction whatsoever. I'm gonna start by scooping the hair towards the center as I work to the left. So just working across the head shape. What is gonna be happening through this part is that I'm building up more weight towards my fingertips. That's more at a 45 degree angle. And then I'm creating a 90 degree collapsed layer um, as I move down the head shape. So still only building up the weight towards the crown, but that's gonna give us a nice shape at the end of this cut. Uh, a little bit of over direction in the, in the side corner, um, which will push some weight forward, which looks really nice in the end. You can always go through, do a little scissor over comb to tighten that up. But uh, yeah, just working through the back. And this now I'm gonna do more of a scooping motion. Again, this ties into combing the new hair towards the guideline. So on the right hand side of the head, I just scoop the hair over. So you can see that shape really build up. Now I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna blow dry using my 339 comb. The reason I blow dry with the comb is because it gives me that extra tension, helps smooth the hair out. But what I wanna look for and why I blow this dry before I cut the top is um, I wanna look for the shape. I wanna see how the nape is, is feeling. I wanna go through and do all the outer edges. So I'm using my 
my T trimmer right now and just working around the entire head shape. I want to finish the sides and the bottom before I move to the top. I like seeing the haircut unfolding, the shape um, that I'm creating coming out in the head. So um, it's just personally, that's a personal preference for me. You could go through and cut the whole entire thing wet if you want to, um, but I just tend to like seeing the, uh, the whole shape unfold as I'm going through the haircut. So this is a, uh, even though this is a mannequin right now, I, I like to comb the hair over the ear and just kind of tap the trimmer around the ear. Um, what that's going to do is not give me too much of a tight feeling, and a lot of people end up cutting those white walls on, on top of the ear, so it keeps you from doing that as well. Um, but if they want it a little bit higher around the ear, then just fold that ear down and take the trimmer around it. Now, I'm also rounding the edges of this haircut. I don't want it to be too squared off. Um, I think that gives it a little bit more of a natural feel. And the thing I like about this haircut is it is a little bit longer on the sides. So um, it's not, you know, I think hair is moving a little bit longer. Um, it seems to be the trend. So, um, you know, as people are growing out their fades and different things like that, uh, I think this is a good cut to transition them into. They probably already have a little bit longer hair on top. Um, so you could definitely mess around with that, but just leave the sides a little bit longer. So now we're taking out the top, combing it down. Um, I'm using water at that point, um, and I'm splitting the head at the division point. So I'm basically imagining um, a front and a back in the head shape. So find that apex, find that high point, and comb the hair straight back. So what I'm going to do is work those vertical sections just like I did in the low crown area. Now I'm working high crown, and I'm following the head shape to collapse it. So the heaviest point will be still sitting at low crown. Um, oh, and I'm swapping out scissors there because I was working with my blacksmith fit, but when I'm working on uh, cutting on top of the head, I like using a shorter scissor uh, on top of my fingers. So this is a 5.7 DB20 scissor from Mizutani as well. Um, all right, so working across the head shape, everything is being brought straight up and uh, using a traveling guide throughout the back crown. Um, pretty much the same exact way that we did on low crown, just continuing that in the back. You can see me kind of shift my finger. What I'm looking for uh, and what makes this a seamless disconnected cut is the fact that even though they don't connect the sides and the top, um, because I'm cutting this at 90 degrees all over the head shape, it will fall seamless. There will not be any lines of weight because of the way that um, I'm holding the hair right now. So you want to make sure that horizontally and vertically you're holding everything at 90 degrees. So you can see my angle 90 degrees here, but uh, when I cut the other side, you'll see the opposite angle, which is also at 90 degrees. So I'm coming straight up and straight out. So you can see how those layers, the buildup of weight is there if you lift it, but if you comb it down, it's nice and seamless. So that is the trick of the day today uh, that I really want you guys to take from this haircut and use it in your, um, in your other disconnections that you do. So following that head shape, working through, keeping everything at 90 degrees. It's really important, like when you're cutting at 90 degrees, you want to make sure that no matter how you're holding the hair, you don't want one tiny bit of an angle below 90 degrees if you're trying to not build weight. So you can see how I'm elevating that straight up from the head, and I'm also cutting it at 90 degrees. So I'm cutting at 90 degrees vertically and horizontally, which is going to give me a seamless cut. Now I'm gonna work into the front uh, bang area of the haircut. Um, this, you wanna have a, a rhyme and reason to the front being longer. So I am going to connect it and I'm gonna follow the head shape a slight bit because I don't want it to collapse it too much and I don't want too much length in the front. So I'm working um, these horizontal sections throughout the, the top and just now I'm over directing everything over the part. So bringing everything over towards me, stationary guide, that's going to give me a side angled bang on the cut, and, um, but I'm also following the head shape, so it's keeping the weight um, 
there. It's keeping the layers in line. So um, you still get, even though this is a disconnected haircut, it has a purpose for everything. So the last section there, over directing it and finishing out the cut. And there you go. So now we're, what we're going to do is we'll go through, we'll blow it dry. Um, still using our 339 comb. The thing I like about blow drying men's hair, and I think a lot of guys might say they don't want to use a blow dryer. I use a blow dryer every day, even on my hair, because you have to place the hair where you want it first. Then you put the product in. It takes two seconds to blow dry, but you can see how already the hair is smoothing out because I'm using that 339 comb. So that gives me the tension and pulls the hair where I want it. Now I do want some of that wave in there, but I'm gonna go in and cut some dry cutting on the top. So I wanted to see how that weight is laying. And then I'll activate it a little bit more by spraying a little bit of water at the end and adding the product in. So just going through, I wanted to see how heavy that front was. And then I'm gonna do some dry cutting uh, now at this point. So you can see how seamless and how um, those layers just kind of flow together, even though they're disconnected. So this is my Mizutani Puffin dry cutting scissor. Go through, do a little slide cutting in the bang uh, just to finish off adding the details. Now I got my Bricado Carve, which is my favorite. It's a cream wax and I spray just a couple mists of water just to dampen the hair a bit and then I add the Carve in there. What that's gonna do is kind of give it more of a wet look to the hair, but um, still has a nice hold to it. All right, guys, if you're in need of any tools, scissors, combs, clips, brushes, anything like that, definitely check out freesaloneducation.com. Hope you like this cut. All right, guys, like always, if you like the video, make sure you post in the comments below and let me know. And if you made it this far in the video, then I'd love to hear that as well. Also, go to freesaloneducation.com and check out everything that we have to offer on our website. And uh, thank you guys so much for the support. Again, hit the like button, hit the share button, and I'll see you on the next video. Thanks.